We're also watching shares of the Kraft Heinz company here on the day. Ticker symbol KHC. Those shares this morning, we're actually seeing those hold on to some gains by about one and a quarter percent. Company topped earnings estimates for the third quarter, beating out expectations on both the top and bottom lines as net sales grew nearly 3% year over year for Kraft Heinz. All right, so one of the good pantry names here for Kraft Heinz. I mean, it is. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I was looking at this corner. I was reminded, I don't know, I just had a flashback to all the American cheese and packages that I ate as a kid. Uh. This was a, this was almost a by the hour snack for me, like two pieces of American cheese, you fold it up and eat it, but it was just, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, Kraft Heinz, <laughs> uh, another good turnaround story, starting to gain a lot of traction under CEO Miguel Patricio, and another food company, like we've been highlighting the past two weeks, pushing through some serious price increases, double digit price increases, benefiting their sales. Volume did take a hit, but still, wow, double digit price increases, not unlike we heard from Coca-Cola yesterday, pushing through 12% price increases in the US. Even with everything that has happened, have we heard a company say, no, we've not been able to raise prices? I can't think of a single company. Well, they, they, they don't come out and say it, Julie. No, but what of they, course what not. What they say is Chipotle. Look at Chipotle when they went to Porter last night. They said lower income consumers are right. visiting their stores cheaper. So they once said people are balking. Yes. That's how you see it, though. But, but what we've been seeing in profit report after profit report is that they are benefiting from these higher prices. In other words, even if consumers are pushing back to some extent, it's not enough to outweigh mm -hmm. the profit gains in most of the cases that we've heard about thus far. Well, where do you go? In, in this environment, if you're, let's say, a P&G and you have Tide, well, the, now the private label stuff is almost on par mm -hmm. with some of the prices yeah. of Tide. So it's, it, where do you, you can't hide out anywhere. And I think the consumer is thinking the same thing. If I can't really hide out anywhere and I'm going to be taking on prices wherever I turn, then why not just continue to lean to the product that I've purchased mm -hmm. for years, if not decades at this point? And so there is kind of that brand affinity that consumers will still display, continue to take price, and even in some parts of their retail experience, they might just go buy and hold mm -hmm. on products too thinking that they might they might not be able to come across that inventory later on. I used my first Tide Pod last week, and it was pretty cool. Like, they feel kind of fun, and you just throw it in there. It was, I don't know, it was, I don't know, it was a fun moment for me. I never used it before. It's pretty I cool. don't think I've ever used a Tide Pod. Yeah, it's pretty cool. No. Let's try it out. No, you're not, I know you're not a Tide Pod. You're not a Tide Pod fan. No? <laughs> I mean, this is a really hard motion to do. For the <laughs>